straight into the first tip. If you're an AMG owner of any kind, what you have to do without fail each and every morning, start your car in the loudest possible setting, emotion start, loud start, whatever you want to call it, and off both sides of your neighbors. If you have the latest range of AMGs, you can emotion start the car by holding that down and then start the car. This is a 2019 C43 and it does not have the emotion start, but you can still start it in its loudest, most antisocial manner. What you do, press the ignition once and the key here is to do it without your foot on the brake. A lot of people miss that out. What that does is switch the ignition on and it activates all the electronics. And what you can do is switch the driving mode. By default, you're in comfort mode. Flick that down twice into Sport Plus, then foot on the brake and start the car. And then you get that loud start and your neighbors are off. But you're happy because you've started your day the way it should. Hi guys, welcome to a, another video. Now today I'm gonna to be going through five tips that pretty much every AMG owner should know. And you know what? You might know all five of these tips and in that case, I'll have wasted 10 minutes of your life that you can never get back. So apologies in advance for that if that is the case. But if not, if one of these tips is useful and it helps you out in your day-to-day -day living with your AMG Mercedes, then great, I haven't just uh, got into my car and wasted some petrol for no reason whatsoever. Right, let's jump straight into tip number two and it's to do with tire pressures. If you've got an AMG vehicle, make sure you are checking your tire pressures quite often. Particularly, you know, naturally AMG vehicles, they've got bigger wheels, you've got bigger tires on them, you know, 19, 20 inch, whatever, whatever AMG vehicle you've got. But although this kind of applies to a lot of different cars, check your tire pressures once a month. Most AMG cars, you know, you've got an onboard tire pressure monitoring system. I have mine kind of, I have my engine temps and tire pressures up just as a force of habit more than anything else. And I generally top them up every kind of one to two months. The reason for doing so is if you've got underinflated tires, that actually harms your miles per gallon quite a lot. Like, you know, if you're underinflated by like, six seven psi that's enough to make several miles per gallon difference and when you've got an amg it, they're thirsty cars you know so it's just save some money just by being a bit smarter i run my tire pressures slightly higher than what's recommended uh, because i live in the uk temperatures are naturally just lower than the rest of europe america etc with those cooler temperatures you're able to run higher air pressure in your tires this particular car i've got 19 inch wheels uh, and i run 43 psi up front and 40 at the back you know this is a three liter bi-turbo engine so it's it's a big old big old beast um, yeah i've managed to do 37 miles per gallon in this car um, you know on a 200 mile journey you know it is possible to make these cars economical so always check your tire pressures. Uh, normally, the recommended tire pressures, it's either kind of on the, the door sill, it can be on the fuel filler cap, depending on what car you've got. But yeah, that's a practical money-saving tip for you guys. Tip number three. Let's say you're on the motorway or uh, dual carriageway, something like that. You're doing 60, 70 miles an hour. You're in ninth gear as, you know, most modern-day AMG vehicles, they've got stupid amounts of gears. Nine, 10 gears, whatever it may be. Nine gears in this one. Above 50 miles an hour, you'll be in ninth gear. Let's say you need to quickly overtake a car. Now, what you can do, you can pull the paddles and try and shift down four or five gears, but the Mercedes AMG transmissions just aren't as good as the BMW M Sport equivalent or the, the Vag stuff from Volkswagen Audi Group. So shifting down the paddles yourself, so in you know comfort mode is gonna take you is gonna take you, you know, a good few, well, a good couple of seconds maybe for the transmission to actually knock those gears down. There's like a big delay if you, you're trying to pull 
several gears at once. The other option is to just stamp your foot on the accelerator pedal and it'll drop several gears and you can do it that way. But from the point at which you kind of put your foot down and you know, if you need to make that split second overtake or whatever, you know, a second might be all the time in the world that <laughs> makes the difference. However, what you can do, so again, in comfort mode, automatic transmission, you pull the down paddle and you hold it down. That will automatically drop to the lowest gear possible for the speed that you're doing to put you in the ideal rev band for the most amount of torque. And what that allows you to do basically is you're able to pre-select your gear in advance. So, you know, you're not, you're not doing it at the point that you need to make your, your overtaking maneuver. You can kind of pre-plan and then do the maneuver. Spirit and spice. Um, tip number four. Tip number four is just a habit. All AMG drivers and just, you know, all drivers in general should get into the habit of doing. Uh, in this day and age, pretty much everyone, we've all got keyless go. We're in the sense that, you know, you don't need to physically turn a key to start the car. You'll have watched enough Instagram, kind of Facebook videos of thieves stealing, you know, high performance, high value cars without even having to break a single door, window, break into your home or anything like that, just with a computer and away goes your car. And it's getting worse. So what you should do is, on your Mercedes key, if I fish it out. So what you should get into the habit of doing is, on your Mercedes key, when you lock the car, don't just press it once. If you double tap that, you'll see a little red light flash, and then that will disable the key after you've locked the car. And that just means, you know, thieves can't use these signal booster thingy-mabobs, I don't know what the hell they're called, to uh, steal your vehicle. But one thing to note is, if you've got, you know, when you buy a car, you always get two sets of keys, don't you? A lot of people keep that spare key in the house. Um, so you gotta make sure that it's been done on your second key as well, or keep the key, that your second key come like in a completely different location to where the vehicle is. Just get into the habit of doing that on your Mercedes key. Then the fifth tip. Ah, oh, did I even do a fifth tip? Right, let me make one up on the spot. Right, I've thought of one. Um, it's something called brake boosting. If you've got an AMG vehicle that's got launch control, um, so AKA, you know, any of the 45 engines, CLA 45, A45, etc., C63, you can ignore this. Or well, actually, no, you can still use it to be fair if you want to do something just really, really quick. But if you've got a 43 car, aka a C43 MG, these don't have launch control. However, you are still able to launch the car. Basically, what you're doing is every modern day AMG has is turbocharged in some way or another. What you're doing is you're building boost pressure before you engage the uh, accelerator and you let the car launch. So you get a little bit more kind of oomph uh, when you initially set off. So actually, um, yeah, do you know what? You could use this even if you've got launch control in your Mercedes AMG. But the thing with Mercedes AMG launch control is that it can sometimes be a bit of a faff to engage. And, you know, by the time you've done it, it's like by the time you've engaged it, it's just, it's taken too long. So this is a quick, this is a quick alternative that's kind of like a middle ground between kind of just pressing your foot on the accelerator from zero and, you know, full-blown launch control. What you do is, left foot on the brake. Left foot on the brake, hard. Put your foot down on the accelerator, build up the revs a bit, and then let go. Works better if you're in a 4 car. It just hooks up the four wheels a bit better. If you're in, let's say, Rear wheel drive C63, um, you end up with a lot of uh, wheel spin at the back, but you know, A45, CLA45, C43, um, works quite well to be fair. Just don't do it every five minutes though, because it's that is a surefire way to absolutely demolish your clutch. So there you have it guys, that's five tips that every AMG vehicle owner should know. If you knew them already, well, 
yeah sorry for wasting your time um found it useful do give this video a big thumbs up as always thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video